My name is Reginaldo Haslet Marroquin, and you are here on my little piece of heaven in Northfield, Minnesota. We call this um, the, an agroforestry system. It's poultry center because we are raising chickens. Um, but because chickens are a jungle animal, the agroforestry context is really, really uh, quite uh, an operating term in this case. So what you'll find is that the chicken is kind of right here at this ground level, but you gotta start way deeper than that to understand not only agroforestry, but also regenerative agriculture design. Regenerative is not about just putting something on the ground and making the ground healthy. It's about restoring the full cycles of the ecology. The critical thing of the design then is, number one, to restore the poultry to its geoevolutionary blueprint, which is the jungles. So the agroforestry aspect of this hits all of those sweet spots and connects the dots for us. So yes, healthy chicken, healthy plants, healthy hazelnuts, and all of that is central to the whole design on the agroforestry side. But then you, we also have to consider, and for today's conversation, the most important part we want to bring into the design is not only biosecurity, but also food safety. Now, from a biosecurity perspective, we are really just trying to keep the birds healthy, keep um, biological um, enemies, so to speak, uh, away from them. So this means bacteria that can make them sick, viruses, um, other things like that. The um, biological control then is, is very traditional. You, know, you don't bring in people with contaminated clothing or contaminated boots or anything like that into the space. The chickens are inside a fenced in area so that they are not also contaminating our own home so, or our own gardens. They, are, they have their space and that's where, where all chicken related stuff happens. So they don't just roam around freely, uh, nearly willy around the, 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 our property in this case, because this, this is a small place also. Um, that would even be even, even more uh, detrimental to the biological control um, for us here and on the farm. The other thing is the biology of the, the biological control of the, of the space where the chickens are grown. So the reason there is rotating paddocks is because if we kept them all in one place all the time, then they will overload that space and, and the bacteria and the viruses, whatever it is that is coming into the space, wouldn't get properly cleaned out, so to speak. Ultraviolet light from the sun can level off most of the biological factors in the field from a, bio, from a biosecurity perspective. But for that to happen, you have to remove the chickens 100% from the area and then, you know, put crops, put seeds in there. And, and in this case, we put straw to mulch them and let that germinate, let that root system, all of those factors, you know, come fully back on, use the manure and so-called, you know, contaminants in this case, the manure as food instead. And so as a result of that, we have a very rich biological system in here. The manure that the chickens deposit, once we move them to the other paddock, won't last past two, three days, and it will be gone. You won't be able to find most of it um, because it's being taken up by not only the worms, the macrobiological systems, um, but also the micro um, biological systems. If it rains, it's a blessing because the capillary tubes that exist already on this ground because of the large amount of microactivity from worms to crickets to all kinds of other vertebrates and invertebrates that populate the soil when there's that kind of uh, food in it, they really are the key to our biosecurity. From a food safety perspective, that's a whole nother area because in that area, yes, we are worrying about the animals. Why? Because the health of the animal is central to having a food, a, a, a safe food supply chain. And by that, I mean, if this chicken is coming out of our, our production units, you know, full of um, salmonella, listeria, and other kinds of you know, dangerous bacteria, because the environment where they were raised is out of balance, and you know, then that chicken is going to increase the chances that a little rupture of the intestines at the processing facility is going to contaminate the whole bird. Now, if, 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 the, if the food is going through the conventional supply chain, that's a very important consideration. Sometimes those, those ruptures may not even be visible. 
uh, they may be microscopic, small tears and stuff. It's all happening all the time. Is one reason, um, you know, in talking with the authorities at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, we have discussed the issue of of uh, food safety in the context of poultry because small processing facilities don't really have the automation, uh, the automated equipment necessary to reduce the human factor in all of this. And by the way, let's talk a little bit about the human factor. All of this, we can have the best biological protocol, the best food safety protocol. So for example, the hazelnuts from the tree gets harvested through one kind of activity uh, and the hazelnuts that fall or either fall off naturally because that's what they do um, when they mature or somebody when physically manually harvesting or machine harvesting for that matter the hazelnut falls to the ground it's critical that the worker or the whomever is, is is doing that job understands that you can't pick them off the ground only the ones from the air so that so that whole supply and management is critical because that the hazelnut then can go into a food people food supply chain while the hazelnuts that fell on the ground have to go through a different place probably in this case we just grind them up and feed them back to the chickens or feed them to somebody who's got a pig production pasture pig for example um, they love the nuts so so that would be just give an idea of the, the food safety protocols that have to be in place. But again, the human factor, whether it's biosecurity or food safety, the human factor is the key. That's how food gets contaminated primarily, um, is by us making mistakes or by not having the, the proper uh, protocols and so on. So that's central. That's the core of our both biosecurity and food safety. So here's something for us to, to ponder. Where do regulations come from? If you really think of it, all the regulations we have, they were not initiated by the government. Maybe they implemented them and they developed them, yes, but it was always in reaction to something. From the road sign on the corner where three accidents have happened and it was noticed that a sign needed to be put in there, to a food safety protocol because there was a clear entry point for uh, uh, contamination in the processing facility. Or, you know, a safety hardness in the tractor because when it tips over, people have been killed on tractors, right? So if you think of where regulations come from, they really come from what we do and the risks that we create for ourselves. So in this world we are in, and trying to develop regenerative systems and this poultry, poultry production system is one of them. We have to integrate the work of a very diverse community. But again, not a model that is owned by a single either entity or, or group. It's a model for everybody to be able to standardize and to, to, to even out the odds that somebody is going to make a mistake that is going to cost them the farm or something. This way we can have everybody at least you know, held by the bottom of the boat, so to speak, so that nobody actually sinks, even if they are underwater. So we need everybody, bottom line.